You are listening to African Father in America podcast by Simon Javano Kelo live from Seattle, Washington, USA. Greetings, greetings, greetings beautiful people. My name is Simon Javan Okelo. I am in Seattle, Washington and uh, I am excited to be here with you for another amazing episode of the African Father in America podcast. Uh, I am truly, truly excited because we have a special guest with us uh, joining us for the show today. I am going to bring him on your screen right now. Uh, I have my brother Paul Hapla, who is an incredible entrepreneur, drama, and you know, just someone that I'm excited to introduce to you all. Paul, go ahead and say hello before we begin the show. Hello, everyone. Simon, thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, you know, definitely checked you out here, and uh, you're doing amazing things here. Thank so, you. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. For those who are joining us for the first time, um, uh, ho hold on for a moment. Paul, do you have the show open on another uh, gadget? This feedback. Do you, do you have the YouTube uh, live on a different gadget near you? No. Okay, this feedback, I don't know why. Uh, but uh, anyway... For those who are joining us for the first time, uh, typically with the African Father in America podcast, we also uh, we bring you fresh uh, African proverbs, you know, ancestral wisdom uh, from our ancestors. And so today we are I'm, I'm just going to share on my screen uh, today's proverb in just a moment here so that uh, we can all, uh, you know, talk about it uh, but also we are going to learn a little more about our guest today uh, we are going to explore uh, you know a couple of things a couple of stories but for now let's just talk about this proverb for a moment a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes uh, this is an amazing proverb and it's from Morocco uh, it's from Morocco all the way in North Africa so uh, a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes. Let me know in the comments what this proverb means to you. And uh, if you have not um, uh, subscribed to the channel yet, I want you to also take a minute and uh, subscribe to the channel now and give this video a thumbs up. That would be definitely appreciated. So um, in a moment, I'm going to create space uh, for us to, you know, uh, engage with our guest. But for now, I want to share three nuggets of wisdom that are related to today's uh, proverb. Paul, uh, how are you doing there? Uh, it, it still yeah. seems like there's an echo. Uh, so I, I think we can continue just like it is. But I suspect that there's a different gadget that you have that has the, the YouTube uh, link for the show live. So that's what's creating the the feedback. So I see the YouTube feed, and then underneath that, I see um, it looks like our live feed, and I can hear myself. You know, so I see what you're saying with the echo. Yeah. Can can you turn the YouTube? Just take your gadget. It's okay if you go off screen for a minute, and then turn the YouTube uh, feed off, and then just come back so that it's just you on the gadget. Okay, so take a minute there and uh, we will be good so that we have a clean, beautiful show uh, to share with the world. So uh, while Paul is uh, working on, on, on fixing, uh, you know, the, the feedback that we are getting, uh, I just want to continue on here uh, for a moment and share with you the three nuggets of wisdom that we have uh, that are related to today's uh, proverb remember today's proverb again i want to share it on the screen here for those who are just joining us a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes so the first nugget of wisdom says here that appearances can be deceiving and things are not always as they seem appearances can be deceiving and things are not always as they seem number two we should not judge or make assumptions based on external factors alone. 
we should not judge or make assumptions based on external factors alone and then finally we must take the time to truly understand a situation or a person before making judgments we must take the time to truly understand a situation or a person before making a judgment yeah so this proverb is beautiful and uh, i love the three nuggets of wisdom i want to know what your own thoughts are in regards to uh, this beautiful proverb uh, as usual i'm going to get our guest to also talk about this proverb for a moment uh, and uh, i also want you to share in the comment what this proverb means to you you know uh, down there in the comment i know that some of you are joining us on facebook some of you are joining us on linkedin some of you are joining us on um on x and some of you are with us on amp but the main place where i always uh, engage the best with everybody during this uh, afia podcast live stream is on youtube and so if you're on youtube make sure you give this video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so paul uh, before i i give you a proper introduction i just want you to take a stab at this proverb it says that uh, a fig tree says that i'll just put it on the screen for the sake of those who are just joining us i see that quite a few people have joined us over there on youtube a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes this is from morocco when we sent you this proverb what came to your mind paul uh can you hear me still i hear you very well now it's perfect okay because yeah I put the inner ear monitors in it's um, perfect cool all right. So yeah. So when I when I first heard that, um, you know, it, it, I could take it a couple of different ways, but um, you know, some, what it made me feel, and I guess how I'll respond to it would be that I think if you have your eye on the prize, that you might be focused on a destination, and what you are looking at is what everyone else is looking at, and and it's the process of getting to it. And how you're aligning with yourself, um, which brings up the the due diligence of what it takes to get somewhere, rather than just having your eye on the prize. And if the fig tree was was the prize, and as you get closer, you know it's full of mosquitoes, you know, then it's it's um it it uh, the mosquitoes thing is a little interesting. <laughs> I'm not sure. I want to hear what you think about it, but. Um, but it, it made me think of that to, for myself is, is that there's a lot of stuff along the way to prepare yourself to get where you're going. And, and it's all about um, those steps are sequential. And really, that's the math that makes the equation. And um, what do you think of that? Did that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. Listen, with African proverbs, uh, all the answers are correct, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> because it's because it's your own perspective you know uh and i think this is the beauty of uh you know ancestral wisdom especially african wisdom it's that uh our ancestors left these ideas and quotes and words for us to ponder on you know uh and uh in you know if if we were back in africa we'd probably be drinking tea or coffee or um after dinner just sitting there and meditating on these words you know and talking about it for hours and thinking oh what could this mean you know so in all it talks about appearances you know and it's something you've touched on you know looks are deceiving you know so as you get closer it it gets clearer uh and it's probably not what you are thinking you know it's probably totally something different you know um so for those who are again joining us for the first time i just want to reintroduce my guest today paul hapler and paul is the official drama for the madaraka festival uh for some reason both of us have madaraka merchandise and i just love that you know it's beautiful and if you want uh, to get a madaraka hoodie or if you want to get a madaraka t-shirt you should dm me on instagram i have a lot of them in my garage and uh, on september 17th uh, at langston hughes performing arts institute one vibe band will be playing and we will be able to share 
a lot of this merchandise with you and the music and the food but Paul is not just uh, the drummer for the one by band uh, but he's also an entrepreneur he's um, he's a creator you know he has so many uh, facets of who he is uh, and that's part of why I wanted him to be a guest here uh, on the show today but at this moment there's a question that I ask all my guests you know it's a question about a childhood story something that continues to inspire you today but it's a story that happened when you are young when you are when you are probably 8 to 12 years old uh, i i normally share a story of mine where when i was 8 years old my mother gave me a bicycle and asked me to help her distribute bread in our neighborhood i grew up in manyata which is a slum in kisumu kenya and kisumu is the third largest city in kenya and so you know just the 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 fact that i had to wake up sometime at 2 am in the morning uh, and distribute milk and bread in our neighborhood allowed me to connect with business people who are also waking up that early in the morning to uh, to make sure that they received the consignments it allowed me to do things that my age mates were not doing it allowed me to build relationships with people uh, in a deeper way and actually became very well known a lot of people are like oh look at that little kid with a bicycle this early in the morning and then on weekends people would still see me but most of the day you know while my my friends were playing i was on the bicycle and so uh, all of this gave me the discipline that i have today you know the work that uh, we do with the madaraka festival uh, the the work that i do with the afia podcast here a lot of it came from those years when i was helping distribute milk and bread so i want you to share a similar story that really drives who you are uh, that enables you to do all the incredible things that you do and then in a moment we will actually go deeper into some of your current initiatives yeah so um you know something that th- that that resonates with me um it definitely is a it, it's a loaded memory But um I uh, was born into a commune um it was actually called the Love Israel family and um you know so we were born in in the woods and uh I w- I was born in a yurt which is like a tent that you can live in year round it could be snowy and everything like that but um I had a a natural birth that was up in the woods with no doctors and it's just you know it's very it was a tribe and um in the process of that you had to have a lot of faith and and community and so from that there's a lot of things that i could take from that but the thing that i wanted to share today is that i remember that i still think about a lot is it has to do with music and um and that is it, the community would get together there was about 350 people um it, you know it was spread out it wasn't just in one area but there was there was a couple of different areas but in the the one main area um was in Arlington Washington and um people would get together and they would do like an omen and i'm not even sure if that's what the 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 term is but basically one person starts you might just be like oh and it doesn't mean that you have to be a good singer but in a community when everyone gets in you know you just start in and people could be in a in a harmony of that they could have a slightly different note that goes together but the group turns into this reverberating thing that echoes through the woods and so anytime there was a major thing happening people would uh you know do a chant kind of a thing in omen and so what that does is when one person's taking a breath another one is still going and so it creates a perpetual loop of everyone just the sound reverberates and it gets louder and louder and the whole is greater than the individual and so it basically brings out the best from everybody and then it's syncing everyone together and this has just been a, a remarkable experience for me um i have memories when i was really 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 young of just hearing this in the distance and um we still have a uh, little get togethers and so we'll we'll do this again and i'm reminded of how special it was and 
tried to explain this to some of my friends when I went to normal school later on in life. But as I've become a producer, I realized that there's something in, in, in a togetherness, you know, in a band, when you collaborate together, you get a greater outcome than maybe the individual idea. And so things, vision starts with someone's idea. Maybe it's a group, a general consensus, but definitely community is key, has been a huge thing for me. And then as I do run sessions, getting the best from everyone is really looking at uh, the whole. And, um, and so that's just uh, something that I just, I just, it's a beautiful memory that I have. It makes me feel good when I think about it. And then uh, I know other cultures use that in maybe a different way, or maybe it's the same way. Um, there was never any like rules to it. It was just a natural type thing, but it's definitely like bringing people together for the greater whole. And, um, you know, great things can happen. And, and not only does it reverberate, but it resonates through time. I love that. So, I love that. Yeah. I love that. It reminds me a lot about Africa and it reminds me about this. Uh, people say it's a cult, but I think it's a religious uh, movement. It's called Lejo Maria. Uh, and it started where I come from in Kisumu, Kenya, and its founder is called Ondetu. And uh, in, in their gathering places, their, their churches, they also do omen, you know, uh, you know, the, and, and they can sing with deep voices for hours and hours. Uh, people walk bare feet. Once you arrive at the gate, it's like you've arrived at the Holy Land, you know. Um, uh, and so you, the, a, a lot of them actually have dreadlocks, you know, like me. They walk bare feet most of the time, you know. And they always walk with, uh, you know, uh, purified water, you know, and they they purify their ways as they walk, you know. Anyway, so it's 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 fascinating. They use different colors of the candle. They wear different, uh, you know, uh, cloth like colors, specific colors, uh, to mean different things like yellow and blue and red and white, you know. Uh, so it's really fascinating to hear this. Uh, so as we are continuing on here with the show, for those who are just joining us, this is the Afia podcast, African Father in America podcast. And uh, I've been doing this uh, podcast for years now. This is the third year and I'm always passionate about, you know, sharing my culture with other people. And so my brother Paul Hapla is our guest today. He's also sharing Part of his culture with us and it's just beautiful to see this kind of exchange um, and one of the things i would love for you paul to talk about now is you know maybe one or two of the projects that you're currently working on that uh, if you were to go back to that commune where you used to live and uh, you are now the elder you know and uh the children want you to tell them what you're up to, you know, what is the project that you're most proud of that you tell them that, you know what, this is what I'm currently working on and this is why it's exciting and this is why you should be involved. Yeah, well, um, speaking of that, we just had a little family reunion and we call it Maja Woods and it's another location off in the woods, but we built a stage out there, um, you know, looks really cool and, um, I've become a musician that the family has a lot of musicians in it. And so I did play and it, it was a chance to be like, what is it that you're up to? And, and, um, you know, my whole life, I've always been working in bands and, and, and doing the community thing. And so I have a couple of different handles, um, for that question, but, um, you know, so Holden Fire is, uh, is my production company, but also my collaboration name for supporting just all the music that I'm working on. But what I'm really happy to share with is that uh, in the last couple of years, I've uh, uh, created my own project that's just me. And um, even though I play a lot of reggae and world beat and, and stuff like that, um, which I love, um, I have a passion for dubstep, um, electronic music and like drum and bass. And being a drummer, I think I heard uh, electronic music um, 
I was like, wow, I think I could play those drum machine beats because they're made by drum machines and not people. But um, I like to play and I'm real physical and stuff like that. So I like the challenge of playing the really fast tempos and jungle drum and bass. And so um, just last night, uh, to, for my, my handle is uh, Satori Sound System. And uh, even the word Satori goes back to that, that statement that I just made about the, uh, the Omin. Um, Satori is like, is like when you have one pointed focus, like as if you're a meditation towards something and in, in the process of, of everything else dissolving away, you have that epiphany, that moment of enlightenment towards what you're focusing on, that epiphany is Satori. And, um, and so Satori sound system is, is really aligning yourself with, with doing things that are, um, maybe outside of the human realm because it's inspired by machines and technology and whatnot. But my, my project is to make this live. And so just uh, last night actually was my first time going live on TikTok. Um, I did a, a four hour and 50 minute stream um, for my drum and bass project from my studio. And um, it went quite well. It was, uh, I think I got about 27,000 likes <laughs> for, for all those people into the clickbait stuff. Um, I'm here to share my music and my passion. And uh, so it's, you know, part of that, part of what I do to grow on there is I created the hashtag, find your passion and share it. And so that was me sharing my passion. And even though I play with a lot of projects, the Tory Sound System is just me doing everything, producing all the, the beats and the bass line and all that stuff. Well, I, I play the, the beats live, but everything else I make ahead of time. And, um, you know, so there's a bit of everything involved to make it all happen and it all comes together. And that, that project's Satori Sound System. I love that. I love that. So you have Satori Sound System uh, and you have its handles. It's in, on, on, uh, on TikTok. Uh, do you have Satori Sound System handles on Instagram as well? Yeah, so Satori Sound System is on Instagram. Um, I'm new there. I could definitely use some love there. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to, I know a lot of people are on there. Um, I found a lot of success on TikTok, but I, but yes, my handle is on, um, is on uh, TikTok and Instagram. And I also have a website for it, satorisoundsystem.com. Excellent. And, uh, yeah. Excellent. So then uh, you have Holding Fire as well. Uh, you know, you have Holding Fire on TikTok as well and across other social media platforms, right? Yes, on Instagram as well too, and, and holdingfire.com as well. Excellent. And then um, now I want us to come back to Paul Hapler. You know, you shared with us your background a little bit about how you grew up in the commune, uh, but I've spent a lot of time with you, you know, and I've learned about your musical journey, how you started touring as a, as a, as a, as a drama, and how you've collaborated with some of the greatest uh, reggae artists, you know. Um, and uh, here in Seattle, you've also worked with some of the most uh, talented musicians that I know, uh, from Bob, Bob Antolin, who is an elder and music teacher here in uh, Seattle, to the One Vibe Band that you currently tour with, uh, and also people like Daniel Miller, who are, you know, seasoned musicians. Uh, but when we've talked in private, you've spoken about Madaraka Festival and how uh, being the official drama of Madaraka Festival has impacted you. And we recently went on a six-city tour with the Madaraka Festival. I just wanted you to paint a picture for those who don't know about the behind-the-scene experience of uh, this year's Madaraka Festival. Speak to that for a moment and what it meant to you uh, as an artist, as a producer, and as a creator. Yeah, um, I want to I back up just a little bit, just just to really put that together, just to make a little timeline. And, uh, you know, I'm I, I, in love with the music from the beginning, um, just naturally. One of the first tapes I ever had was actually a Bob Marley tape um, before I ever played music, you know. Um, 
But because I was interested in that and I practiced that, I got recruited out of high school to play in Symphony de la Steel, which is an authentic uh, steel drum band from Antigua. And they won Panorama, which is a, it's like the biggest steel drum band competition in the world. Their drummer died. And um, they recruited me because the nephew was, uh, went to the same high school as me. And uh, so that even, that brought me to Antigua. I was able to do carnival and jump up, you know, for two weeks straight. And um, coming back from there, uh, it turned out that the, the steel drum band pan leader was an MC. And so out of high school, his guitar player and keyboard player, Shaka and Pudu, they are world players that play with everybody in the world and, you know, hundreds and hundreds of major artists. And so from like right out of high school, I basically started playing some high caliber gigs um, by being really into reggae music. And so in the process of that, you know, I started a roofing company with the guy that I went to school with, which is another one of my entrepreneurial things. But through the process of music, travel was always my my key thing that I was like focusing on. Yes, I'm trying to do music, but I want to travel the world through music. And so from that, staying focused on things created more opportunities. And the opportunity that came along that I feel that I was uh, kind of seasoned and, and ready for was the opportunity that you gave me by being a part of, uh, you know, the One Vibe band. And so I, I've made a lot of sacrifices to be available for opportunities and do things, but you actually gave me the better opportunity to travel and be a part of something that's, that is completing my, um, my loop there, which is to travel through music. And, you know, so you took me to the East coast. I've never been to the East coast before. And so that was like, that was like, that meant a lot to me, you know, a, a whole lot to, uh, to the, my goals and aspirations and, and all those things. And so you really made, you know, I know we're going to travel further and we're going to do that more and more frequently, but that really, that closed the loop for me. That's, that was me achieving my goals. And so thanks so much for, for, for allowing me to, you know, be a part of such an amazing vision that you got. Yeah, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all the kind words. I feel that I didn't, I didn't create the opportunity for you. You are preparing on your own, uh, getting ready for that moment. I was preparing for it. And I feel that even Saudi soul were preparing for that moment. King Kaka was preparing for that moment. Everybody that was involved with that tour uh, was in their life somehow getting ready for that moment. And when we all met, it was like what you're saying with Satori, you know. We converged and we did something so magical. And, uh, you know, luckily we documented it, you know. We documented it thoroughly and, uh, you know, the entire Madaraka Festival uh, USA Tour 2023 is going to be a subject of a documentary that is still in the works, you know. So I am very, very privileged that we got to, uh, you know, have this opportunity to work together. Um, now, as we continue on with the conversation, for those who are just joining us, my name is Simon Okelo. I am the host of the African Father in America podcast and we are live streaming right now on YouTube and multiple other platforms. Uh, and I would love for you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Uh, today, we have a very, very special guest, Paul Hapla, who is an entrepreneur, drama, producer, and just a wonderful uh, person to be around. And we started our conversation with uh, an amazing proverb from uh, Morocco. It says that a fig tree with, a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes i'm going to put it on my screen right now so that those who want to see it visually can see it you know actually this is friday's proverb so i'll bring the i'll bring up the one for today forgive me uh i'll, I'll bring up the one for today uh, just give me a second here my beautiful uh viewers and listeners a fig tree with figs turned out to be a ruin with mosquitoes so uh, I want to know your perspectives on this proverb. Share it in the comments below. And um, I just want to continue on with my conversation here with my special guest, Paul Hapla, 
before I continue though, I want to just share a couple of things that are going on uh, that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, uh, on September 17th, we have uh, the Taste of Madaraka Festival. This is going to be an incredible, intimate dinner. We are going to have a Ugandan chef based here in Seattle that is going to make uh, a sumptuous dinner, you know, delicious food from Uganda, you know, and uh, we will have one vibe band that Paul is the drama. I'll be singing that day, so you, you don't want to miss it, you know. So you have to be there for September 17th. Uh, we will be at Langston Hughes Performing Arts Institute. Langston Hughes is an iconic venue here in Seattle, Washington. And so, tell a friend to tell a friend September 17th. Secondly, September 30th, uh, I will be at the Africa Day Business Forum. It's uh, September 30th at Motif Hotel in downtown Seattle. The Africa Day Business Forum has been going on for 23 years. And uh, it was started by an elder in the African community who actually came to the U.S. As a, as a, through a scholarship that he got around the same time that Obama's father came to the U.S., long before President Obama was born. So this is someone who has a lot of history. But ever since that time, he's been a business person. For example, he started the first African, uh, African craft store right next to where Starbucks originated from. So he knew when Starbucks started and uh, he's always connected American businesses to African businesses. He's brought African government officials. Last year, there were over seven governors from across Africa. There were many ambassadors from across Africa, uh, the, even vice presidents, uh, for example, the the Tanzanian vice president has been to this event. So I don't want you to miss the opportunity to connect with business people and expand your business knowledge and also do business with Africa. Uh, and that's possible on September 30th. I don't want you to miss that. So now, uh, Paul, as we continue on with our conversation, uh, I just wanted you to touch on, you know, some of the, some of the, number one, how people can connect with you, you know, how people can connect with you and support the work that you're doing. But also, I know that you are always producing, uh, you know, music. You're always um, involved with bands and uh, you're doing stuff. So I just want you to talk about what you're currently working on that people can go and listen to, uh, but also how people can stay in touch with you and how people can, um, you know, support your work. This is part of our wrapping up process. Then after that, I'll ask you to just share anything that I did not ask you that you just want to speak to. Uh, that is what I'll ask you next. Okay, yeah. Um, well, definitely, um, I've, I've created quite the, um, as I, I produce uh, all kinds of music, you know, so multi-genre producer. And because of that, I started a page on TikTok for what genre I'm producing. And so I kind of have a, quite a few handles there or end up being the admin for the bands that I'm working with. Um, something I'm really happy to share right now is also on September 30th is, is our CD release show. So I'll be coming to your event and then uh, finishing off the night with uh, our album release from the High Life Band, which is with uh, Daniel Miller. It's his project. And, um, and so we have a, an album that's been out or, or, or is coming out on that day, but we just slowly released uh, music videos, which, uh, reggaeville.com. Um, they released our music video on August 1st and it's doing really well. I think it's got like 11,000 views already. We have a, our second, uh, it's actually the single of the album is coming out on September 1st, also by Reggaeville. Um, but, uh, and that's the High Life Band. Um, and and uh, so we're, all those handles are on Instagram as well as TikTok. And um, I'm the admin, so if you ever find us and you leave me a message or anything like that, I'll get right back to you. I'm a big mutual supporter. Um, so, you know, if you leave a comment on me, I'm going to find your page and leave some comments on your page, too. And so that's just, you know, teamwork makes the dream work, you know, has kind of been the, the whole growth pattern here in the, the community. Um, so, yeah, so, you know, Holden Fias, Satori Sound System, the High Life Band. 
Comfort Food Band is Bob Antolin's project. You know, we got some songs that uh, we just got mastered from Line Fox Mastering. Um, and um, so we're, we're looking forward to dropping those tracks as well. Um, so whether it be TikTok or Instagram, those are the two places to find me. Um, yes, there's websites in, involved. They might not be as social. They're more of like a destination link for, for handling real business or or whatnot, but the the day to day to get a hold of me there is uh, you know all my information's posted and and I'm always on there and always loading new. Um, it's always just music of what I'm producing and working on and um, trying to share with everybody. So happy to say that I do have some music videos that were just completed and, and put out and and the world is starting to view them and and September 30th is a big day for for lots of reasons and so I look forward to spending the day with you at. Uh, the event you'd mentioned and then uh, and then uh closing the night off with uh an album release from the high life band that's beautiful that's beautiful i can't wait uh as well to uh spend the day with you and also come to the album launch uh you know uh the album launch is going to be at royal room in columbia city right yep, yep. excellent excellent wonderful stay, is that grounded is opening uh, stay grounded if you've heard of them they're, they're yes a band too. Uh, wonderful wonderful i'll definitely be there to support so is there anything i didn't ask you that uh you want to touch on i feel that there's a lot uh, that we condensed during our conversation and uh, i would love to have you again as a guest so that we can expand on some of the things that we talked about you know uh i would love to actually expand on the commune that you lived in i feel that we need to go back to that that um, kind of living uh, in the world today because if you if you think about it just yesterday i was watching a news uh, video uh, here in seattle uh, yesterday at 4 a.m in the morning there was mass shooting here in seattle in mount baker you know and the idea of communal living is also how you know the people that live around you. That's how you share food with people. That's how you share resources with people. And that's how you disarm people, you know. You don't disarm people violently. You disarm people by being with them and showing up for them. And so I feel that uh, how, how, how you are brought up is, is much like how I was brought up. And it's a conversation that needs to continue. So... Uh, speak to anything that you really really wanted to talk to that i didn't uh bring up and then we will wrap up the show and we'll bring you on again in the next few weeks so that we can continue the conversation yeah so you know the the community is key has been a, a big part of the growth that i do in 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 like the extended community of we'll say social media for for people that are just not necessarily in my city but across the globe um, so coming from a commune, it always stays in mind that community is key and everything that you just said is completely, that's, that's spot on, you know? Um, and so, uh, you know, what, what reminds me, uh, also of that is the trip that I just took to Genesis farms and Genesis mountain retreat. Um, uh, my buddy, my great buddy, uh, Eric Hansen has a little sustainable farm and he's got a, a 40 by 100 foot greenhouse. It's got like a, you know, it's completely a closed loop. So he has a big giant 500 gallon bins, like six of them full of tilapia fish. And that's making the nutrients. And then that feeds the garden and there is a aquaponics. Um, he's got some really advanced technology, but one of those greenhouses can be self-sustaining and then that could feed a whole village. And so getting people to, it's kind of interesting, like we all are condensed into cities right now, but if we were a little bit more spread out so that there's a comfortable space, but yet living as a community, the whole structure on, in, in the key term there is sustainability, is uh, you're able to kind of live off the land and then, but you're living amongst each other and, and it becomes a more personal thing where you're spending more time with each other everybody kind of knows everybody and we're all kind of you know we're all at the same playing field we're all just like trying to figure it out and and, and enjoy the the time that we have here and so yeah it's just, there's just a lot of you know there's a lot of harmony involved in that and uh something i didn't even mention but uh you know my birth name 
that was given to me is reconcile or reconciliation. And um, when I was uh, born, um, my sister is seven years older than me. She had a vision in her dream and she told an elder and the elder carved a symbol that she saw, a little mandala into a, a, a stamp. So it was like a wax stamp for closing a seal. It ended up being the seal of the family. That's like an eight pointed star with a circle and a dot in it. You might've seen the tattoo on my, on my leg. But um, when I was 20 something years old, my sister pulls up and, and, it, and it shows that the definition of harmony is uh, reconcile, is one of the, the things. And so I have this tattooed on me, but my, my sister really did, you know, have this vision of that. And so the harmony, you know, has a lot to do with music, but also community. And when you have a good po positive community, you have harmony and, and sustainability is kind of like harmony of being a human that needs to, you know, create symbiotic relationships with the land and the people around it. And again, that then radiates outwards to community across, you know, multiple communities and in states and countries you know, and all over the globe. And so a lot of these things I was born into, they end up resonate, resonating with me. And, and um, I find my role of being reconciled. Um, I constantly am in that seat and I accept. Um, I actually tattooed it onto my arm in Sanskrit and, uh, you know, as well as the symbol. But it's definitely something I live by. And, and I, I can't wait to take you to this, this farm so that you can see the, the garden and it's a it's a place for music too so we'll, we'll be doing a one vibe event there for sure i love that i love that yeah. whenever whenever we go i have to bring my nyati tea you know yeah absolutely yeah i have to bring my nyati tea so that we can also bring the the luo ancestors the luo vibration to uh to that space but I definitely want to spread that technology, the aquaponics uh, technology that your friend Eric is uh, implementing. Uh, I would love to bring it to Kenya and uh, help fight uh, hunger and fight poverty, create jobs and feed people nutritious food, you know. So it's something I definitely want to learn more and uh, implement. But uh, we've come to the tail end of our conversation now and I just want you to know that I thank you uh, for taking the time. It's very early in the morning uh, here in Seattle, Washington. And so um, thank you again, Paul. I'm, I'm sure I'll be seeing you a few times this week. And, uh, you know, take care of yourself. And to all our viewers, no matter where you are, thank you again for taking the time to join us for today's show share your your thoughts in regards to this entire conversation with Paul Hapler and also share your thoughts in regards to the proverb that we we were discussing today uh, thanks again Paul uh, take care of yourself peace and love Th thanks so much for having me Simon excellent African father in America ah. You are listening to African Father in America podcast by Simon Javanokelo, live from Seattle.